the deep ancient forests of Japan, a land veiled in mystery and draped in twilight, there echoed the soft whispers of creatures both feared and revered. These were the kitsune, fox spirits of Japanese mythology, who walked a fine line between the known and the unknown, the seen and the unseen. In the hush of the night, under a moonlit sky, the kitsune played and plotted, their eyes gleaming with secrets untold. Their presence was as elusive as their shifting shadows. They were the silent watchers, the hidden whisperers, a presence felt rather than seen. The air around them hummed with the magic of the old world, a world where spirits, gods, mortals, and nature coexisted. This is the story of the kitsune and the origin of the nine-tailed fox. The origins of the kitsune traced back to the earliest annals of Japanese history, to texts like the Kojiki and Nihon Shoki. These tales spoke of the kitsune not merely as creatures of flesh and bone, but as beings of a deeper, more profound nature. They were seen as messengers of the gods, creatures of the earth, yet touched by the divine. In the old Chinese stories, from which their legend partly originated, the kitsune were known as Huli Jing, fox spirits of a similar nature. These tales traveled over seas and mountains, eventually reaching the shores of Japan, where they took root and flourished. The Japanese kitsune, while sharing similarities with their Chinese counterparts, took on a distinct identity, reflective of the unique spiritual landscape of Japan. In the shadowed groves and rustling leaves of Japan's sacred shrines, the kitsune found their home. They became an integral part of the country's mythology, a symbol of the mystical boundary between the earthly and the ethereal. Their stories, passed down through generations, were a vibrant mix of wonder, awe, and sometimes a touch of fear. In the Japanese legends, the kitsune were creatures of extraordinary presence. They fell under the category of yokai, which was a class of supernatural entities or spirits in Japanese mythology. Visually, they bore the elegant form of a fox, yet there was something unmistakably otherworldly about them. Their fur ranged from a fiery red to a pure ethereal white that shimmered with an almost imperceptible glow, particularly under the moonlight. Their eyes, deep and knowing, seemed to hold centuries of wisdom, flickering with intelligence that transcended the ordinary. They would sometimes be depicted as, or take the form of a human woman, to interact with the human world as they saw fit. The kitsune were not bound by a singular nature. Their personalities were as varied as the leaves in an autumn forest, making them one of the most unpredictable and fascinating figures in Japanese mythology. They existed in a state of moral ambiguity, being neither entirely evil or good. In Japanese mythology, there are said to be 13 types of kitsune, each corresponding to a different element. Celestial, wind, spirit, darkness, fire, earth, river, ocean, forest, mountain, thunder, sound, and time. Some kitsune were recognized for their intelligence, a trait that they honed over the many years of their existence. Their wisdom was not just a product of age, but of experience, gathered from watching the world change, from empires rising and falling, from the tales of humans and gods alike. Other kitsune were seen as noble guardians. These were the foxes who watched over ancient forests, sacred shrines, or even individual families. Stories tell of kitsune warding off evil spirits, guiding lost travelers, or bringing fortune to those they favored. In these tales, the kitsune's loyalty and protective instincts shone through, revealing a benevolent side to their character. One such story is the tale of the Kitsune's Lantern. As the story goes, there once lived a poor but kind-hearted man on the outskirts of a village. One evening, under the glow of a crescent moon, he encountered a Kitsune. This fox spirit, in a mood for mischief, transformed into a traveling merchant selling a lantern. The lantern, the Kitsune claimed, was no ordinary light but a magical one capable of bringing fortune to its owner. Intrigued and desperate for a change in his fortunes, the man spent his last coins on this lantern. The villagers laughed at his gullibility, but the man held on to hope. That night, 
As the lantern glowed, it indeed began to bring him luck. His crops grew abundantly, and lost treasures were found in his field, and soon he became the most prosperous man in the village. The twist, however, lay in the true nature of the lantern's magic. It wasn't the lantern that changed his luck, but his belief in it. The Kitsune, pleased with the lesson imparted, revealed itself to the man offering him a glimpse into the mystical world of the Kitsune. This tale, passed down through generations, reminds us of the power of belief and the unexpected ways in which fortune can smile upon us. Conversely, there were Kitsune known for their mischievous and deceptive nature, which was as much a part of them as their bushy tails. They could be benevolent, using their cunning minds to guide lost souls or to teach a much-needed lesson to the arrogant. Yet they could also create illusions that led the greedy or the cruel astray, their tricks serving as poetic justice in the human realm. The Kitsune's deceptive nature and benevolent nature was shown in the tale of the invisible silk robe, a story that intertwined the allure of magic with the perils of human desire and greed. In this tale, a kitsune, intrigued by the nature of human greed, presented a poor farmer with a gift, a robe woven from the finest silk, light as air, and as shimmering as dew in the morning sun. The kitsune revealed that this robe had the power to make its wearer invisible. The farmer, initially cautious, soon began to use the robe for small, seemingly harmless acts, sneaking into plays, listening to private conversations. However, as time passed, his actions grew bolder, greedier. He started using the robe for personal gain, stealing and eavesdropping on secrets not meant for his ears. One day, as the farmer sat in the village square, invisible and smug in his ill-gotten success, the robe suddenly vanished, leaving him exposed and humiliated. The villagers, realizing what he had done, scorned him for his deceit. The Kitsune watched from afar its point made. The robe was not just a magical garment, but a test of character, a lesson in the dangers of letting greed and desire overtake one's moral compass. In the pantheon of Japanese deities, Inari stood as a pivotal figure, the god of agriculture, fertility, protection, and prosperity. It was with Inari that the Kitsune found their most profound connection. Revered as the messengers and protectors of Inari, the Kitsune were a link between the divine and the mortal world. This bond was celebrated and honored at Inari's shrines, which dotted the Japanese landscape. These shrines were sanctuaries, not just for humans, but for Kitsune as well. Stone statues of Kitsune, often adorned with red bibs and holding keys or sheaves of rice in their mouths, stood guard at these sacred places. They were more than mere representations. They were believed to be vessels for the Kitsune spirit, a physical manifestation of their protective presence. People from all walks of life would visit these shrines, offering prayers and tokens in the hope of receiving blessings. Farmers sought bountiful harvests, merchants prayed for prosperity, and many came seeking wisdom or protection. In return, it was believed that the Kitsune, as divine messengers, carried these prayers to Inari, acting as intermediaries between humanity and the gods. During festivals dedicated to Inari, the Kitsune were celebrated with great reverence. There were dances and rituals performed in their honor, stories told of their deeds, and offerings made to please them. In these moments, the Kitsune were more than just myth. They were a vital part of the spiritual fabric of Japanese life, bridging the gap between the tangible and the intangible, the human and the divine. In the tale of the White Fox of Shinoda, it showcased how some Kitsune were revered by the people of ancient Japan. As the story goes, in the forests of Shinoda, there lived a white fox, revered as a guardian spirit by the local villagers. Its coat was as pure as snow, and its eyes shone like the clearest of winter nights. One fateful day, a hunter, new to the region and unaware of the fox's revered status, killed the white fox. Mistaking it for a regular animal, the village was struck with grief and dismay at the loss of their guardian spirit. Realizing the grave mistake, the hunter and the villagers sought to make amends. In honor of the fallen fox, they built a shrine, the Shinoda Shrine, dedicating it to the spirit of the white fox. They believed that by honoring the fox, they could appease its spirit 
and seek forgiveness for the thoughtless act. Over time, the shrine became a place of pilgrimage, attracting people from far and wide who came to pay respect to the spirit of the white fox. According to Japanese folklore, the kitsune were beings of extraordinary power, their abilities as varied and profound as the stories told about them. The art of shapeshifting was perhaps the most famous of the kitsune's powers. With this ability, they could transform into any human form, from a beautiful maiden to an elderly sage, seamlessly blending into the human world. This power was not merely physical, but also magical, allowing them to adopt the very mannerisms and speech of the form they took. In order to utilize this transformation, they first had to collect reeds, a leaf or a skull, and place it over its head. Then they would use their magic to shapeshift into whatever form they saw fit. However, the Kitsune's transformations were not perfect. It was said that many Kitsune would retain their fox-like features when shapeshifting into a human, most commonly their tails, but sometimes their ears. In these tails, the Kitsune needed to make a conscious effort to conceal their features. Though many were successful, it was common for Kitsune to unintentionally reveal their true identity when they were in a state of carelessness or drunkenness. But that was not their only weakness, though. Kitsune were believed to both fear and hate dogs. It was said that dogs could sniff out a disguised Kitsune and would become aggressive towards them. This would ultimately make the Kitsune revert into its fox form and flee back into the forest. Most important to the Kitsune was the Hoshi no Tama. This was a glowing orb that acted as the container for their soul, and without it, it was believed that the Kitsune would lose its strength and pass away. When they transformed into a human, the orb took the shape of an amulet to wear around their neck. As a fox, they simply carried the orb in their mouth or on their tail. Illusions were another tool in their magical arsenal. With this magic, they could make themselves invisible. But more commonly, Kitsune conjured visions and sounds, creating enchanting, dreamlike scenarios that captivated or misled humans. They could even manifest dreams into those who were sleeping, attacking their very subconscious. These illusions were so convincing that they could alter perceptions of reality, leading even the wisest to question their senses and sanity. During these spells, some Kitsune would take advantage of the opportunity and drain the energy and life force of the unsuspecting victim, much like a vampire or a succubus. The Kitsune, these powerful beings despite their magical prowess, were not beyond the reach of spiritual influence. Even though they were known for their trickery and enchanting spells, they held a unique susceptibility to the forces of faith and sacred rituals. In many tales, it is said that Buddhist prayers and Shinto rituals held a particular power over the Kitsune. Monks and priests, armed with their deep spiritual knowledge, could ward off a Kitsune's trickery or even break their magical spells. In some stories, the mere presence of sacred artifacts or the chanting of holy sutras was enough to reveal a Kitsune's true form or banish them from a place they had been haunting. Central to their identity was the number of tales they possessed. A Kitsune could have up to nine tales, which most commonly symbolized their age, wisdom, and magical prowess. A Kitsune with fewer tails were considered younger and weaker than those with more tails. A nine-tailed Kitsune, however, was a sight to behold. They were creatures of immense power and ancient wisdom, often regarded with a mix of awe and reverence. Those with fewer tails were said to have less control over their magic, which meant when using powers, such as shapeshifting, they could not maintain that form as long as their more tailed counterparts. The Kitsune were also capable of producing the Kitsunebi, or Foxfire. It was a unique and mysterious aspect of their magic. These ethereal flames, often blue or green, could be seen flickering in the night, especially near cemeteries or in the forest. They were both a beacon of the Kitsune's presence and a display of their mystical power, a merging of the eerie and the sublime. The Foxfire were often used in Kitsune weddings, on certain nights, when the moon cast a gentle glow over the fields and forests, villagers would sometimes see these flickering lights moving in a procession through the darkness. According to legend, when a kitsune found its mate, 
they would marry in grand ethereal ceremonies attended by other fox spirits. These weddings, though rarely witnessed by human eyes, were said to be spectacular affairs with lights dancing through the night as the kitsune celebrated their union. The villagers held these events in high regard, considering it a good omen to observe signs of a kitsune wedding. However, there was a catch to this auspicious event. It was believed that speaking about the wedding out loud would bring bad luck or even misfortune. Despite the Kitsune's capacity for mischief and deception, they were not heartless. They were beings of deep emotional complexity, capable of forming genuine bonds with humans. There exist numerous Japanese tales about the Kitsune playing a central role in the dance of love and seduction. While Kitsune were capable of transforming into anyone, they were particularly renowned for impersonating beautiful women. Common belief in Japan was that any woman encountered alone, especially at dusk or night, was very likely a kitsune. In many tales, a kitsune would choose to spend its life in the human world, feeling the full spectrum of love, joy, sorrow, and loss that came with such a choice. In these stories, some kitsune would take on the role of a devoted wife, only leaving once their true identity had been discovered. It was said that children born from this union were gifted with supernatural abilities or immense physical prowess. This ability to transform into a human female made them adept at navigating the complex world of human emotions, leading to stories that intertwine the supernatural with the mundane. Here are a few stories that talk about the Kitsune's seduction and love of man. Tamamo no Mei Tamamo no Mei's tale is one of the most captivating in the annals of Kitsune lore, a story that intertwines beauty power, and tragedy. She was a kitsune of exceptional beauty and intelligence with a charm that transcended the ordinary. Taking the form of a breathtakingly beautiful woman, she entered the imperial court, quickly rising in ranks due to her wit and elegance. Her presence at court was like a radiant sun, captivating everyone, from the lowest servant to the emperor himself. She became an esteemed courtesan, known not just for her beauty, but also for her profound knowledge and artistic talents. However, beneath her enchanting exterior lay her true identity as a kitsune, a secret she guarded closely. As time passed, a series of mysterious and unfortunate events began to plague the court. The emperor fell gravely ill under mysterious circumstances, and suspicions arose. A wise on Myoji, specialist in magic and divination, was called upon to uncover the cause of these calamities. Through his spiritual insight, he revealed Tamamo no Mei's true nature as a kitsune. The revelation sent shockwaves through the court. The once revered beauty was now seen as a malevolent spirit. The story culminated in a dramatic and tragic confrontation, where Tamamo no Mei's enchantment was broken and her true fox form was revealed. Her fate, as told in various versions of the tale, often ends in sorrow and mystery, leaving a legacy that continues to be a subject of fascination and speculation. Kuzunoha, the Kitsune Kuzunoha's story, in contrast, is a touching tale of love and sacrifice. She was a Kitsune who, through a twist of fate, fell in love with a human. Disguising herself as a beautiful woman, she married the man she loved and lived a life of domestic bliss. Their union was blessed with a child, who would later become the legendary Abe no Seime, famed for his magical prowess. Kuzunoha's life as a human wife was marked by love and dedication. However, the knowledge of her true nature always lingered in the shadows. The story reaches a poignant moment when Kuzunoha's true identity is accidentally revealed to her husband. Faced with the reality of her existence, Kuzunoha made the heart-wrenching decision to leave her family. Before departing, she wrote a moving poem expressing her undying love for her husband and son and her sorrow at leaving them. Kuzunoha's story is remembered as a beautiful narrative of the intersection of the human and the supernatural, a tale that speaks to the heart's capacity for love, regardless of form or origin. The Broken Promise In a small village nestled between the whispering forests and rolling hills, 
there lived a man whose life was as ordinary as the setting sun. One day, while wandering through the woods, he heard a soft whimper. Following the sound, he found a kitsune caught in a hunter's trap. Moved by compassion, he carefully freed the creature, which limped away into the underbrush, its eyes holding a look of gratitude. Days passed, and the man had almost forgotten the incident when a mysterious woman arrived at his doorstep. She was of unparalleled beauty, with a grace that seemed otherworldly. She revealed herself to be the kitsune he had saved, transformed into human form. In gratitude for his kindness, she offered to become his wife with one condition. He must never reveal her true nature to anyone. Their life together was filled with happiness. They shared a love that seemed to defy the bounds of the ordinary, a love rooted in a secret that bonded them deeply. But as time wore on, the weight of the secret began to burden the man. One fateful night, overcome by wine and the pressure of his hidden knowledge, he revealed his wife's true identity to a close friend. Word of this revelation spread like wildfire. The Kitsune, realizing that their sacred trust had been broken, was heartbroken. With a heavy heart and tears that sparkled like morning dew, she bid farewell to the man she loved and disappeared into the forest, leaving him to grapple with the profound consequences of his betrayal. The Kitsune no Soshi Among the many tales of the Kitsune, one particular story stands out from the rest, the Kitsune no Soshi. As the story goes, a Buddhist monk received a letter expressing amorous intentions from a Kitsune disguised as a mysterious lady. Later, she paid the monk a visit, dressed in alluring attire and carrying a seductive demeanor. The Kitsune then reveals to the monk that she would like him to visit her back at her mansion. The monk, despite taking a vow of celibacy, could not resist the temptation to indulge in his carnal instincts. He agreed enthusiastically and was conveyed to her mansion in a splendid ox cart, escorted by a trio of servants. The mansion was luxuriously appointed, with deluxe furniture and an array of musical instruments. There were numerous male and female attendants, all of whom seemed to enjoy indulging in feasting and drinking. The monk, who was seduced by the splendor of such surroundings, succumbed to the temptation to enjoy this decadent lifestyle. The monk spent what he believed to be years there until one day he heard someone pounding at the gate. A group of Buddhist monks who were wielding shakujo, staves topped with metal rings, entered the mansion. Upon seeing the arrival of the monks, the kitsune and all her servants suddenly fled hastily. The confused monk looked around and saw them all transform into foxes as they scamper away in all directions. When he finally came back to his senses, he discovered that, rather than being in a magnificent mansion, he was crouched under the floorboards of the main building in Kongo Shoin, a Buddhist temple in Kyoto. What he had imagined to be beautiful blinds and tatami mats were nothing but pieces of rough matting made of straw and reeds. The musical instruments he hallucinated were horse and cow bones, and the serving platters and dishes were only broken saddles and skulls. He discovers that his clothes were patched together with pieces of old and dirty paper, and that his whole appearance was so haggard and ridiculous that the children who were playing nearby clapped their hands and started to dance with glee when they caught sight of him crawling out from under the temple building. In that moment, a samurai who knew the monk was passing by and stopped to see what all the commotion was about. When he asked the monk what had happened, the monk was speechless. The samurai removed the rags the monk was wearing and gave him his own upper robe, but because the monk was so tall, his legs remained exposed. Ashamed, he finally went back to his home village. Although he believed he had been gone for seven years, he soon learned that he had spent only seven days living under the temple. Each of these stories showcased the Kitsune's ability to navigate the human heart. They were not just creatures of magic and might, but also beings capable of understanding and influencing the deepest human emotions. These tales of Kitsune seduction often carried moral lessons. They were not just stories of deceit, but also narratives that explored the complexities of emotions and relationships. The Kitsune, in their guise as humans, experienced the full spectrum of love, jealousy, joy, passion, wisdom, and sorrow. 
As we draw the curtains on the mystical world of Kitsune, it becomes clear that these enchanting fox spirits are much more than mere characters in Japanese folklore. They are symbols of the intricate dance between the natural and the supernatural, a dance that has captivated human imagination for centuries. Their stories, rich in lessons, symbolism, and moral dilemmas, reflect the deep human fascination with the mysteries of the world around us and the unseen forces that shape our realities. The varied personalities of the Kitsune, ranging from benevolent guardians to seductive tricksters, mirror our own complex human nature. They remind us that every being, every entity has many layers, and that understanding these layers requires insight, empathy, and often a willingness to look beyond appearances. In conclusion, the Kitsune stands as a captivating figure in Japanese folklore, a creature that embodies the combination of the physical and the ethereal. Its legacy continues to intrigue and inspire, serving as a window into the rich and mystical human interaction with the unseen forces of nature and spirit. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. What did you think? Did I miss any details? Let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome to the channel. I hope I earned a like and subscription in your eyes. If not, that's okay. I'll keep making videos until I do earn it. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for your continued support. I truly appreciate all the views, likes, subscriptions, and kind words and messages. Without you, this channel wouldn't be here today. That's it for now. I hope to see you all in the next one.